This is Chronicle. Okay, I'm going to talk about Miss Salutin, and she's one of the Genesis unit from the last chapter. And then also, this shoe is originally used by her. Yeah. And then right now, I have her mementos here, and with these gears. And then I managed to master most of the gates, except for third gate and fourth gate. And then for the seals or runes, I equipped with the physical defense time 2 and single attack time 1. Yeah, but then actually you can equip with the physical defense time 3. Yeah, all physical defense. So that her overall physical defense will be more than 2k, I think. Or you can switch around with HP plus physical defense set or HP plus accuracy set. Yeah, either way. And then with the strike attack and then guards or anything. And then physical defense, magic defense, and anything. Okay, next is her Kaigan Laser. It increases her overall attack power and defense. But then all of her attacks is depending on her P attack plus P defense. Minus of the enemy P defense. Yeah, so basically as long as if her physical attack and physical defense is high, the damage should be very high. Yeah. And then next is her leader skill. This leader skill is very good for all types of strike attacker and with the shooting resistance and accuracy up. Yeah, so this is actually quite good. And then if you master her third gate, this strike attack changes into all attack 20%. So that you can mess around with all types of attacker. Whether it's a P attack or M attack, it doesn't really matter as long as it is a light unit. Okay, next is her main sub and master ability, and I will go through about it at the training arena. Okay, let's go. Okay, her overall status is about this high, and then of course, if you are using any leader skill that is increase her physical attack or physical defense, it will be even higher. And how about her normal attack? Okay, about 8k, and then about 8.5k, okay. And next is her main ability. Okay, this first skill will permanently increase her physical attack and physical defense and can be stacked 3 times. As well as, this and this skill will have the power up for 3 turns, which is a target provoke on the enemies after when she used this or this skill. Yeah, so it's actually quite good, especially even if you are using auto, she will be using this skill from the start. Yeah, so it's quite nice. But then, after when she uses this skill, it cannot be used again for the next 3 turns. So beware. And then next is... This second skill is a simple moving attack plus stun status for 1 turns. Yeah, so this is quite good for arena and PvP as well as the shooting range can be extended. Yeah, so it's quite nice. And then the damage is about 13k and then 17.5k, okay. And then it says this third skill is also a movie skill but it is an AoE diamond attack and then the shooting range can be extended as well. And if you master her 5th gate, it adds extra HP regen for 1 turn as well as it only targets the enemies. Yeah, so that even if your allies is within the enemy target range, it will not hit your allies. So it's quite good. And then the damage is about 11k and then 17k. And next is for this last skill, it will recover her HP and also increase her all defense, all status resistance for one turn. Yeah, and it increased by 100 if I'm not wrong. So this is actually quite a powerful skill. But then, you only can use one time, and even if you are using auto, she will not use. Yeah, so this is only for manual, so beware. Okay, next is her sub ability. For this first skill, it will increase her CT, and also increase her physical attack time 2, plus shooting range increase for one turn. So basically, it's a charge skill, yeah. And then next is... For this second skill, it will reduce the enemy's physical attack 
and also greatly increase the jewel cost for one third. So basically, this is very good for PBB and some of the hell quests. Yeah, but that is not for Arena. Too bad. And then the AOE is 7 times 7 bit square. Yeah, so it's pretty big as you can see. <laughs> okay, next is this last skill is an area attack and also greatly increase her speed for one turn. Yeah, so basically it will be very easy to get to her next turn. And then the damage is about 11k and then about 15k. And next is her master ability. Okay, this first skill is from her Memento's visual ability. And then it is a single target attack plus reduce the enemy physical defense to zero for one turn before she is using this skill. Yeah, so basically it's similar with the Innocent defense, but the only difference is your other physical attacker will also have the high damage. Yeah, but then if the enemy has the debuff resistance for the physical defense, it will be useless. Yeah, so beware. And then of course, if you max break these mementos, it will increase the overall skill attack power. And the damage is about 13k and then about 17k. Okay, quite nice. And next is her reaction ability. Okay, as you can see, she has two reaction ability. And for the first one, it will only activate if the opponent is using any shooting attack, whether it's a physical or magic. Yeah, it really doesn't matter. And then, before the enemy's attack, she will remove all of the enemy buff as well as her speed gradient increase and joy regen and shooting range increase and can be stacked for two times for one turn. And what's more, the shooting range is 10. Yeah, pretty far away actually. And then, thanks to the shooting range increase, she can easily target the long range attacker. Yeah, so it's quite nice. And then for the second reaction ability is also quite good. It will activate if the enemy does not use any shooting attack on her. Her physical defense increase and along with the joy regen and can be stacked for 3 times. But then instead of 1 turn, it is 1 attack. So basically, if she never use any attack, it is a permanent buff. Yeah, so it's really very good. Especially... This joy regen and this joy regen can be stacked together. Yeah. But then, the shooting range is only just 3. So beware. And then, depending on the situation, you can switch this rash ability with... This rash ability is from the Valkyrie and Chan, and it will only activate if the opponent is using either pierce attack or jump attack, and it will greatly reduce the damage. So if you are fighting against those opponents, who like to use the jump attack, like for example, Kadanova or Rosa, or some of the characters who can use a jump, so that she can easily survive the attack. But then, this is only applies to the pierce attack or jump attack, so it will be very useless on other attacks, so beware. Okay, next is her support ability. Okay, this passive increases her physical attack and physical defense, as well as all of the damage will reduce about 70% up to 6k damage. And also the shield will revive back for each of her turn. Yeah, so basically this is a permanent shield buff. Very nice. As well as it also greatly increases her speed for 2 turns. Yeah, so the chances of her first turn is pretty high so that she'll be using the physical attack and physical defense buff from the start. Yeah, before the enemy attack. And then next is... Okay, this passive is when you master her second gate. It will further increase her physical defense and HP. Yeah, so these two passive will be the best for her. But then, depending on the situation, you can switch this passive with... This one. And it also increases her physical defense and HP. And with the jump resistance. Yeah, so as I said earlier, if you guys are fighting against the jump attack, this might be the better choice along with the another rash ability. But then, if you equip with this passive, her P defense and HP will be dropped. Yeah, so beware. Okay, next is her mementos. Okay, if you guys don't have her mementos, 
you can equip with anything that is increased her physical attack or defense or HP or speed. Yeah, either one. And then for these mementos, this shooting resistance is pretty good. So that with the help of the leader skill and gear and runes, her shooting resistance can be more than 70%. Pretty high. Yeah. And also increase the accuracy. Yeah, so basically she can easily attack the evasion unit. And if you mess with these mementos, it adds extra skill usage plus one. Actually, it's pretty good, but then to me, it's actually quite optional, especially if you are using her for auto. This, she will not even using the charge skill or defense skill. But then if you are using manual, it will be different story, of course. Unless, if you want her to use more attack skill, yes, please go ahead. Otherwise, with this mementos and the BCR, I think should be good enough. Okay, next is the leader skill. Okay, this leader skill is only for the Genesis and Bidia group. And it greatly increases the physical defense as well as with the area attack resistance and speed plus 5%. It is really very good with all types of physical defense attacker. Like for example, Krore, Nafumi, and Daphne, those kind of creators. So if you guys want to use this leader skill, just go ahead and mess break with the relief. Yeah, seriously. No problem. Okay, next is her gear. This accessory is from her mementos and it increases her physical attack, physical defense, accuracy, and shooting resistance. Very, very good accessory. Super, super good. Because this accessory, all Nvidia plus light unit can be equipped. This, Prore, and Dine, those kind of creators can equip. Very nice, even cannot. So that they will have accuracy up and shooting resistance at the same time, with high defense. And then this is her weapon ability. She will target provokes the enemies for 2 turns from the start of the map. Yeah, so basically this is only very good for PvP and Arena and some of the health quests. But then, this weapon ability is really nothing much compared to the status increase. And then if you don't have this accessory, you can equip with anything that is increased her physical defense. I think should be good enough. Or physical attack. Okay, next is. Okay, this armor you can get from the Genesis event. I think it's from the Daphne chapter. And then it increased her HP, initial jewel, Storm vs the MB and Defend vs the MB. Yeah, so it's pretty good as a free armor. But of course, you can actually switch around with the other armor or accessory that is increased her HP with something. Will be good enough. Since she cannot use this weapon ability. It's only for Daphne, this one. Okay, next is... This accessory is from Sharon Mementos. But it's a limited, so beware. And it increases her speed. So resistant, side attack up and bad attack up. Yeah, so this accessory is not really that bad for her since it increases her speed plus 12. Yeah, so that she has higher speed. Uh, basically, you can equip with anything you like, like increase her speed or resistance or vulnerability with resistance. Yeah, anything you like. Okay, next is I'm going to use this skill for three times. And let's see her overall attack power increase by how much. Okay, let's go. Okay, before I use the skill, as you can see, right now her speed is near 300 for 2 turns from the start of the map. So like for example, if you're using her Mementos leader skill that increases 5% speed, or any leader skill that is increased 10%, so that her speed will be about 300 plus. Yeah, so it's really very high. And then this is... Okay, right now her physical attack and defense is about this high. And then, if you add these two together, it's about 5k. Yeah, pretty high. And it's a permanent buff. And let's see the normal attack. About 12.5k and then... 13.2k, okay. And how about this skill? About 20k and... 27k. And this one... About 17k and then 26k, okay. And then this one. About 17k and 23k. 
Lastly is the master ability, this one. About 19.5k and about 26k. So if I mass break these mementos, I think this might be the highest damage. Since it reduces the physical defense to zero. Okay, next is I'm going to activate this physical defense and stack three times. And let's see the total power increase by how much with the permanent buff. Okay, let's go. Okay, right now her physical defense is about 5.5k. Okay, and let's see the normal attack. 19k and then 20k. Okay, and this one. About 30.5k and then about 41k. And this one. About 25k and then about 40k. And this one. 26k and 25k and this one near 30k and near 40k okay okay lastly is i'm going to activate this physical attack time 2 and let's see the total damage increase by how much okay let's go okay the total attack power status is about 10k yeah as you can see near 10k and then let's see her normal attack 25k and then 26k okay and this one near 40k and 53k and this one about 33k and 52k and this one 34k and then 45.5k and how about this one about 38k and then 51k okay very nice okay right now i'm going to try how well she can defend the damage with the slash attack and shooting attack and then my sezuna status is about this high and then let's see this skill damage is how much 22k okay one one kill and how about eulalia Okay, her status is about this high. And then let's see this skill attack. Okay, about 80 to 85%. And then if I use this skill, about 9.7k. Yeah, not really that bad because base salute team, she has the shield. Yeah, 6k damage shield. So at least it also reduces a bit damage along with the shooting resistance. Okay, right now, I activate Mesalutin or buff. Reaction ability and the permanent buff. And let's see the same skill attack. This one, how much? Okay, it's about 75 to 80%. Yeah, reduce a bit. And how about this skill? Not bad, but it's still very high. And then how about Setsuna? Okay, this one. 20k. <laughs> So you only reduce about 2k, I think, at most. Okay, next is... Okay, right now, my character doesn't have any buff. And let's see this skill attack how much. Ha ha ha, very nice. 17k only. Yeah, with the help of the shield. And how about Eoladia? And then with this skill... Okay, I think about 10%. Yeah, and how about this skill? <laughs> Only 10k. So most likely, if I activate her rash ability, everything, the damage should be super low for the shooting attack. So conclusion is, she is an attacking tank. Yeah, similar with Nafumi, but then her damage is based from physical attack and physical defense. So basically it's Higher than Nafumi, yeah. But then, in terms of survivability, Nafumi has the higher chance, yeah. But that is only applies to manual, not auto. So beware. And then, second thing is, her mementos, BCR, is extremely good, yeah. But then, it is still considered optional. You can actually replace with some other gears, as long as it increases the physical defense or physical attack. Yeah, but of course, if you have her mementos, it will be even better. And then third thing is, she has slightly high resistance on the shooting attack. 
Yeah, thanks to the mementos and the gear. But then of course, you can actually increase her other resistance with the help of the other leader skill and gear and rules. So that she can easily survive the enemy's attack. But there's one weakness about her is, if the opponent has the ability to remove her buff, or unify her buff, or penetrate her shield, I think she may die quite easily, despite on her physical defense is quite high. Yeah, especially on the magic attack. So other than those attack and those skill, I think she may not die so easily. Yeah, especially for the shooting attack. And then lastly is, she is good in most of the content, except for the red boss. Yeah, because she does not have ability to reduce the resistance, and her overall damage power is not really as high as the Zaha or some other character. Yeah, so she is only very good for the PvP arena and hell quest, normal quest. Yeah, those kind of quests and even tower. So is she a must or not? My answer is optional. But then, if you guys really like her, just go ahead and get her with the mementos, everything, and that's it. Okay, so that's all about Miss Salutin. Thank you for watching this video. If you guys got any question about her, please comment. See ya, Sanara. ちはだかるなら覚悟しろ。消えろ。眠れ、せめて苦しませ。眠れ、せめて苦しませ。この程度では全然足らないな。<笑>